Green Lantern issue 4 finds Hal Jordan meet with Sinestro in the diner, asking why he shouldn't just gut the villain then and there. Sinestro smugly thinks that he could do that with the sword construct Hal has aimed at his stomach, but he thinks they are on better terms than that. Hal reminds him they're not, thanks to what his soldiers did on Karuga, and they will never be on good terms ever again. Sinestro thinks that the hero is delusional, revealing that he is a Zoltaman transmitter, courtesy of some friends who got it through the quarantine zone around Earth. Brandishing the remote, he says that with one thought, three sonic bombs will destroy Coast City yet again. Hal puts the construct away as Sinestro reveals that he wants the ring Hal has. Hal immediately rejects the demand, angering Sinestro who slams his hand on the counter, prompting the waitress to ask if he wants more coffee. Hal waves her off, thinking that Sinestro has had enough as Sinestro continues his threats, demanding Hal give him the ring so he can finally get off the mud ball he calls a home. Hal asks if the Legion of Doom ran out of money for a boom tube or a dimensional rift, but Sinestro reminds him that the United Planets is making travel to and from Earth harder every day, and the ring seems to be the only way off. Hal figures that the United Planets are after him, but Sinestro knows that once they find out that Hal has a ring, they'll be after him as well. However, Hal doesn't seem to really care about the United Planets. Sinestro tires of the games, demanding the ring one last time, or he'll activate his bombs. Hal gives him the ring as Sinestro puts it on trying to power it up but it won't. He realises this isn't just some lantern ring as Hal summons it back to himself, telling Sinestro that it's something new that only can be used by him. Sinestro finds that a pity, detonating the bombs. The diner is rocked by a loud boom as Sinestro goes to leave, telling Hal that he can either catch him or help the people, knowing full well Hal is not quick enough to do both. Hal changes and grabs his phone, knowing that someone is quicker though as the Flash arrives in Coast City. Hal quickly tells him about the bombs around the city, but he has a plan, hoping Barry remembers the idea he had for tracking the villain's sonar. He creates a shield construct and Barry runs by, grabbing it. Hal strains to keep the construct solid at super speed, telling Flash that the bombs are sending out sonic waves, but the shield is thin enough that the sonic waves should actually push against it, reverberating and giving him the locations of the bombs. The plan works and Flash gets the directions on the first bomb, throwing it high into the sky where Hal destroys it with a shark construct. Hal warns Barry that he's almost at his limit with the ring, causing Flash to quickly point out the other two bomb locations. He gathers them together and Hal slams them together in a construct, destroying them both. Hal's power and the shield fades as he's reunited with the Flash. The heroes begin to look for Sinestro, but he's gone without a trace. Hal never saw Sinestro that emotional, even when he leveled a city on his homeworld. Barry asks if this is the first time he's seen the villain since the Dark Crisis event, but Hal says he saw him not long after that, and he's up to something now. He hopes that he can enlist the help of Barry Allen this time round instead of the Flash as they head to Ferris Air. Barry, using his CSI skills, looks over the area Sinestro broke into, finding that he melted his way into the hangar using a Rainian blast rifle. Hal knows between that, the sonic bombs, the cloaking tech and the alien thugs, Sinestro is partnering with someone new, but he doesn't know why he was in the hangar. Barry looks over the drones, knowing that Sinestro placed something on the hull of the drone. He points out the area to Hal as Carol comes by, hugging Barry. Barry thinks that Hal and her should come round for dinner with him and Iris, and while Hal thinks that could be fun, Carol reveals to Barry that she is with someone else. Hal rubs it in by revealing that she is engaged, leading to Barry to eagerly say that he is as well before congratulating her. Carol wants to know what Sinestro did to her ships, but Barry doesn't know, pointing out the little marks from whatever Sinestro put on them. Hal says that he was looking for a way off planet and maybe he thought he could use the drones to get home. Carol is shocked that he saw the villain, leading to Hal to tell her that he gave Sinestro his ring but it didn't work for him since the ring only seems to work with him. Carol warns him that they need the drones to be operational for the military demonstration in a few days and if they don't work, a ferris air will be grounded for good. Barry wants to go and run some diagnostics and check that nothing was changed and he'll call Terrific Tech to see if they can get a forensic analysis done. Carol says her goodbyes and Barry calls Hal an idiot, something which he is very well aware of. Barry's watchings and a report comes in on an attack on LA. 
Hal thinks that it could be Sinestro, and Barry's readings are of the extraterrestrial kind, so it definitely could be him. Hal wants to go and stop him before he does more damage, and besides, he owes Barry for the help earlier. Flash thinks that he owes him more than that, but it's a good start. The heroes arrive in Los Angeles to find the city bombarded by meteors and tornadoes, and the heroes realize this is the work of major disaster. They split up to each deal with one of the disasters, dealing with the tornado and meteors pretty quickly before finding major disaster disaster on a rooftop. The villain knows that the lanterns can't stop him now thanks to his enhanced power bands, but Hal makes a camera construct, blinding the villain with its flash, and that gives the flash enough opening to punch the villain hundreds of times in one second, knocking him out instantly. Later, as the villain is carted away by the cops, the two friends catch up on a rooftop, with Barry telling Hal that Wally and Linda just had their third kid, Dick and the Titans are standing in for the Justice League, and Roy has found his daughter. Hal thinks that they are getting old, as Barry wants to know what is going on with him, since Carol is engaged to someone else other than him. Hal doesn't blame her though, since he's been out into space fighting evil, and she has a right to move on with her life. He does tell Barry that he has always loved her though, and Barry knows that she isn't married to the other guy yet, so he can still get her back. Hal knows he can still pursue her, but he knows it comes off as petty though, and doesn't think that it's fair to Carol, since while he's back for now, he doesn't know how long that's going to be for, and at some point Sinestro will make his move, or a crisis will pull him away again, and if he really does love her, then maybe he just needs to let her be happy and not worry about every time he has to leave. Barry tells him that with Iris, no matter what, she always worries about him, and it's not about the what-ifs of the future, and the real question is, who does Hal want to face the what-ifs with? He does though tell his friend to pull back on chasing her a bit and just try and be her friend that she fell in love with originally. Hal thinks that he's right and Barry knows he is, since he's a scientist. Hal asks Flash that if he's raced Superman and the other Flashes and won, could he also beat a man whose ring moves him light years at a time? Flash is eager to find out, but also brings up the bands that Major Disaster was using in LA, and how they weren't from this world. Hal knows, citing them as Angoran and supervillains with alien tech is not a good thing to have around. The Flash tells him to watch his back since he's going to be so far ahead of Green Lantern, he's not going to be able to. Hal knows that Barry is right and whoever is passing alien tech out like candy on Halloween is dangerous and giving it to someone like Sinestro could be apocalyptic. While the friends race off, the drones at Ferris Air come online, blasting themselves out of the hangar and into the night sky. Elsewhere in the galaxy, on the planet Zella, a young purple-skinned Karugan boy named Korg puts together the finishing touches on his latest invention, knowing that he needs to leave a mark and get everyone who thinks he's a joke to take him seriously and to fear him. Suddenly he is grabbed by Naga, who tells the boy he should be asleep. Korg says he's not tired, but Naga figures that if he stopped messing around with the electrical stuff, he would be. He reminds Korg that wearing a yellow ring on his hand isn't going to help turn him into Sinestro, but the boy tells him it's actually a knuckle shock taser. Not a ring, but Nagaf doesn't care, reminding him that he's just another orphan bastard child from Karuga who was allowed to live amongst his family thanks to the monthly contribution he is meant to be giving the man. Nagaf, however, knows that he's low this month, and the boy better get him some cash from Smash smash and grabs and steal something or he's going to be in very big trouble. He throws Korg down, screaming at the other sleeping children around him that that should be an example to them all. Korg storms off into the city, scouting out a secret casino for the high-rolling politicians of the mining planet. He finds it hiding in plain sight thanks to the bribes the owners have given to local law enforcement. He soon spots some heavily armed guards and knows that they are protecting one thing, credits, and a lot of them. He paints a little mustache onto his face to make himself look more like Sinestro as he watches the credits being moved out of the casino in containers, knowing that this is his chance. He puts on his shock knuckle duster and leaps from the building, telling himself that the one thing he's learned about being in the universe alone is that it's not angry or loving or caring, it's just indifferent and sometimes you gotta jump on its back and force it to make sense. He attacks the guards, dodging their blaster fire as he smashes one of the robots in the face with his weapon, breaking its jaw. He reminds himself to build the fear, then spread it, just like his father would. 
He goes to punch one of the big out guards, but his weak hit does nothing, causing the alien to return the favor and smash Korg in the face. The alien tells him that they don't like having their hard earned credits stolen from their place of business. He grabs a knife as Korg swings one of the credit containers into the alien's face, giving him a chance to escape across the rooftop with the container. The aliens shoot after him, hitting the container, and later, Nagath is angered at Korg as almost all of the credits were ruined by Blaster Fire. He calls the boy worthless, angering Korg who tries to hit him with the knuckle duster, but Nagath stops his blow, again calling him delusional. He wipes the marks from Korg's face, telling him to stop trying to be something and someone he obviously isn't. This only girds Korg's resolve, knowing exactly who he is and how he's going to show Naga. He retrieves a small syringe injector from his backpack, telling himself that once he gets Sinestro's blood, the entire universe will know he is his son. 